Hi, I'm Madison Brown. And I'm Courtney Clark, and in this video, we will be looking at the moon and half dome, a photograph taken by Ansel Adams, along with black iris created by Georgia O'Keeffe. These two images will be contrasting two different views of nature. Ansel Adams' Moon and Half Dome photograph is an American piece of artwork that was taken in 1960 at Yosemite National Park. Adams was well known for being skilled in anticipating exposure in his photographs. He was also famous for landscape photography. Moons are featured in many of Ansel Adams' works. Many photographs of the moon come out revealing the moon as an overexposed white or featureless gray disk. His ability to capture the moon's features and dimensions through using proper exposure is quite remarkable. To take this photograph, Adams used a spotlight meter with an angle of view of only one half a degree, so he was able to take a light reading from the moon alone in the scene and placed it in zone 7 of his system. This photograph was taken using a Hasselblad camera with a 2 and 1 fourth inch square negative and an orange filter. Many tourists have tried to recreate this photo, including Adams himself, but in Adams' own words, it is never the same half dome, never the same light, or never the same mood. This image was able to be captured with the alignment of the lighting, perspective, clouds, weather, and features of the landscape. The moon in this image is in the gibbous stage, meaning it is between half and full. The half dome itself clearly reveals its rocky texture and details, although some characteristics are hidden behind the dark shadows. This picture draws attention to the viewer through its black and white contrast and appeal to nature. The shadows bring life and dimension to the image through harsh contrast and grayscale, while also giving a sense of the actuality of nature. This photograph is a realistic idea of nature compared to Georgia O'Keeffe's piece that will be discussed later in this video. With another look on nature in contrast with Ansel Adams' ideals is the artist Georgia O'Keeffe, ex-wife of Alfred Stieglitz, famous American photographer. She was born in November 15, 1887, the second of seven children, and grew up on a farm in Sun Prairie, Wisconsin. She took many lessons as a child and continued to excel into high school, which is where she decided to become an artist. O'Keeffe studied at the Art Institute of Chicago in the years 1905 to 1906, which seems not very long. She then moved on to the Art Student League in New York in the years 1907 to 1908, where she was quick to master art making. In 1908, she won the league's William Merritt Chase Still Life Prize for another one of her oils on canvas pieces. She then shortly quit for four years, soon to return to school in the summer of 1912. She made New Mexico her permanent home three years after Stieglitz's death and continued working in watercolor, pencil, and clay until two years before her death on 1986. She now has her own museum named after herself in New Mexico, filled with her own pieces of abstract art. O'Keeffe is famous for her abstract paintings of flowers, specifically focusing on her piece Black Iris, a Stieglitz collection, oil on canvas, created in 1969. This piece is a zoom depiction of a black iris. She uses an overabundance of organic lines, creating a beautifully composed piece. Although she changes the angle of view to make a simple object complex and abstract, the viewers are still able to recognize what the subject matter is. That's what is what's so beautiful about O'Keeffe's works. She takes everyday nature and sees the beauty in it, transforming it into art. She changes the ordinary into extraordinary. 
Her chosen color scheme includes colors that are subtly graded from impenetrable black, purple, and deep maroon to soft pinks, grays, and whites, creating the effects of a springtime bloom. These colors are rendered very softly together, almost looking as if the piece was done in watercolor, although it was done in oil. Some have compared her pieces with sexual innuendos, but she continuously denies all claims. She clearly wants the world to view nature as abstractly as she does.